Hey, thanks for joining us for this video. Uh, if you've watched our previous video, um, you'll notice that we were kind of walking through uh, a series of future and present value questions applying to one particular scenario, and that's our, our actor here, Megan Barry. Uh, and so in the first scenario, we were trying to solve for what we call the present or the future value. Um, in, in this particular question, we're going to be trying to solve for the present value. Uh, and so similar to the prior scenario, um, Megan Barry has some financial questions for the next three years as she's a freshman at Min University of Minnesota. Uh, so this particular question relates to the present value. So I'm going to read the question here, which is presented in front of you. Uh, and that is Megan is applying for a scholarship currently valued at $5,000. If she is awarded it at the end of next year, how much is the scholarship worth in today's dollars, assuming inflation of 3%? And so there's a couple important elements to this question uh, first of which is that we're being awarded the scholarship at the end of next year, which means we don't have the money in our possession. So as we know, because of the time value of money, this $5,000 in the future isn't really worth $5,000 today because of inflation, right? Because we don't have it presently in our possession. So we give up the opportunity to do things with it. Uh, the other aspect of this uh, is of course the inflation piece, uh, which if you're familiar from your econ classes, inflation is the rising uh, uh, price of goods and services. And so because goods are becoming more expensive, um, as a result, money that we don't have in our possession, we're essentially having the opportunity to do less with it, assuming of course our wages aren't re increasing uh, commensurately with the inflation increase. So similar to the prior video, we're first going to start by uh, kind of graphically representing what we have going on here. And so I'm going to draw a similar timeline with present value here. Now, in this case, we really don't know what the present value of the $5,000 is. That's what we have to solve. And what we know, though, is in a year from now, we're going to be getting $5,000. But... Uh, obviously that $5,000 is going to be worth a little bit differently um, because it's not really going to be $5,000, right? It's, it's $5,000 in, 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 in next year's money. Uh, so we're going to try to do what's called discount this $5,000 into today's dollars. And so we can kind of compare what this is truly worth. And this is a really simple question because we're just going to be going back one year. We're not going back 20, 30 years, which in case a financial calculator would be hugely helpful. Uh, and if you've done any of these types of questions uh, by hand for 20, 30 years, you realize just how cumbersome that becomes uh, and how important it becomes to stay organized. Uh, so uh, we're, let me first start by kind of showing what the present value formula is. It's very similar to future value, uh, but we kind of make a couple of changes. And so the present value is the equivalent of the future value divided by one plus our interest rate to the nth power. And so notice this is very similar. We're obviously just making some uh, different arrangements or rearrangements rather, uh, so we get the desired result. So on this side, we're gonna go ahead and note our variables, which is the next step to identify what do we have. And so present value is unknown. That's what we're solving for. Our future value is of course the $5,000 in one year. Our interest rate, which is the little i, is going to be the 3%. And n, the number of years, is going to be one. So pretty simple. So we start by filling in what are the variables that we have. And so we've got $5,000 in the future divided by one plus Again, we've got to convert this from a percentage to a decimal. So we're multiplying 1.03 to the nth power, which is one. Now this is a pretty simple question, right? Because we know that anything uh, multiplied to the first power is the exact same number. And so if we were to kind of move this into its next form, we would have $5,000 divided by one, point zero three and so go ahead and take out your calculator if you have one already or use the calculator on your computer and then divide five thousand dollars by one point zero three and what you should get is four thousand 
$854. And if you round, you're going to end up with 37 cents. And so that is going to be our present value, which we can put right here. And so you're asking, you know, well, why is this actually worth less? Well, because ultimately, if we had it in our possession, we would actually have the ability to use it. But because of this 3%, this is actually going to turn this $5,000 by the time that we have it into roughly the equivalent of the $4,854.37. And this really kind of explains the importance of accounting for inflation, right? Knowing that inflation erodes purchasing power, um, having the ability to increase uh, money over time uh, obviously is important to counteract some of the negative effects of inflation.